Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Adrenal Fatigue Podcast. It's Danielle and Angela here. We're really excited today to be talking about such a common symptom. So many people in our community are bringing this subject up and we want to offer some insight and hopefully some, some suggestions and relief around the topic of adrenaline rushes. Mm -hmm. So we all could probably know what adrenaline junkies and adrenaline rushes, like what that feels like, but, um, maybe just to start things off, Angela, like we just talk about like what, what that actually is. Right. So, you know, the symptoms well, but, um, it can be anything from a racing heart to uh, jitters, nervousness, uh, definitely a surge of energy you'll feel. And so that can come with shaky limbs, even a shortness of breath or a shallow breathing, um, racing mind, heart palpitations, anxiety, high blood pressure. So all those things can be a part of it and the symptoms associated or the sensations that you might feel. So what's actually happening, those symptoms are there for a reason, right? They're the result of the adrenal glands producing those stress hormones and releasing them like adrenaline, epinephrine and cortisol to help you address the threat, right? So you have the energy to fight or flee or you have, so you're ready to go um, in that mode. So, um, so yeah, that's really what's happening. So um, and we want to just differentiate that from what are the symptoms of having high adrenaline when you have it chronically? So Danielle, you were going to touch on that a bit. Yeah. And so when it comes to like those adrenaline rushes, it's almost thinking like roller coaster ride, right? Like mm -hmm. the like excitement and those feelings leading up to just like that just quick decline on a roller coaster. But when you're living with high adrenaline more chronically, this is where we see a lot of overlapping symptoms of the whole adrenal fatigue picture. When you have high adrenaline more chronically, you'll likely see those initial symptoms sneaking into your day-to-day -day more regularly, which many adrenal fatigue sufferers do. But there's some other symptoms like ADHD, fibromyalgia, insomnia, uh, teeth grinding at night, irritable bowel syndrome, nighttime urination, anxiety, depression, mood swings, which are signs of high adrenaline. A question that might pop up when you hear some of these symptoms, and if you've listened to some of our other podcasts is like, well, if my adrenaline's high, does that mean I have stage one adrenal fatigue, stage two, stage three, like, where does that put me? And in any situation where you have this chronic stress on your body, your adrenaline is going to be high. Have this constant call for adrenaline because your body is perceiving threats or thinks it's in a stressful situation that it needs to deal with. Then it's going to call in those other stress hormones. And this is really how that cascade begins with all of the other stress hormones and into the sex hormones as things progress in a more chronic way. Such a common issue, but why is this happening in such a chronic way in the first place? Yeah, it's a, such a good question. And for many of us, um, we live in a pretty high stress world and we have a lot of things that are actual or even perceived threats, right? And so if we have a lot of different um, stress that we're dealing with. And when I say we talk about stress, right, we're not just talking about like what you think of as just, you know, physical or sorry, mental or emotional stress. Um, all those are very important. We're also talking about different stressors that your body could be going through the physical stress. So things like, um, you know, digestion or every time you eat, um, is some, are you reacting to something that you're eating? Or is, if your gut health is compromised, right, every time you're eating, you might have, you um, trouble digesting properly. So that's a stress in the body. Uh, sleep, it can be a stressor if you suffer from sleep issues, right? That's a stress on the body. So all of those different types of stressors, when you're dealing with those chronically and you're constantly having that demand, right, of those stress hormones on the adrenals, right, over time, um, we can't tend to keep up in any way. Well, that's where that adrenaline um, tend to have a high adrenaline um, High adrenaline, that means you have a lot of stress going on in your life in some fashion, right? Physical, mental, or emotional. Um, so like I said, it can be an actual threat um, or it can be perceived. So something that, um, that you feel like is a threat, whether it be looking at your bank account or um, you know, noticing a symptom or you know, taking a supplement and having a reaction or whatever it may be, um, or it could be reliving, right, emotional or mental stress from your past. So all of those things can be contributing, right, to that high adrenaline and that firing of the stress response. Right. Thanks, Angela. It's easy to imagine, like, high adrenaline, like, thinking, like, that stress wound up state, like adrenaline, like, you know, I'm thinking very wired. Michael Platt mentioned on his podcast that people tend to be just born 
with this tendency to be more adrenaline dominant as well. So more quickly going there. And it's just remembering, as Angela said, it all starts in your brain, right? And so your brain doesn't know the difference up between a bear in front of you right now, or a bear that you're creating in your head, thinking about a situation that has been, or could be when you're lying safe in your bed mm-hmm. in the middle of the night. And so you're creating this adrenaline dominant state with these thoughts and yeah, that's a huge, a huge part of it for so many of us. And I just want to piggyback on that. Such a good point. And so I'd say people that had highly anxious parents, right. Um, even, you know, in utero, right. You, you have, you sense that you kind of, um, it's, it's somehow um, projected a little bit onto us, right? Or if you had a really stressful or traumatic childhood, right? All of those things can kind of set you up to have that more chronic um, adrenaline as, as just part of um, sort of your, your life and your biochemistry, if you will. Almost like your baseline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's really so- hard to break that cycle. We know that, right? especially the mental emotional stuff is very much in our subconscious and it's really hard to break the cycles of that. So um, if you're dealing with that, you know, um, a lot of us are dealing it with it in some fashion or form in some, some way, somewhere along the spectrum, right? We, all of us have had some trauma of some kind, whether it be capital T or lowercase T trauma, but um, yeah, we definitely have different levels. And, and again, it's, yeah, it's something that a lot of us maybe even don't have control over um, or feel like we don't have control over, but we definitely can, we can, um, start to learn, start to rewire the nervous system, particularly working with the vagus nerve in order to learn and practice how to drop in from out of that sympathetic um, stress state into the parasympathetic rest and digest state. So it's very important, especially for injury and recovery, right? Because um, it's all about the HPA access and um, the adrenals being the end of that piece. And it's really important for us to learn how to, to, uh, perceive life and, you know, take that sensory in, in, um, input from the outside world and interpret it differently in order to um, stay calmer more often, right? Have resilience and be able to bounce back from stresses throughout our day. So important. It's almost like a snake eating its tail, really, because when we are more adrenaline dominant, those stress hormones are higher. That physiological state puts us in a place where we're naturally looking like we're naturally anxious, looking for all the different outcomes, all the different situations that could occur so we can deal with them. Right. But that this is where it becomes a vicious cycle is like, we get caught in that state. And then we're looking at all these different situations, what could happen. And then we're worrying about it. And we're staying in that high, high state of adrenaline dominance and stress hormone, stress hormone dominance in general. And this just leads to to burnout. We get tired. So I kind of want to talk about now what would cause someone to experience a rush of adrenaline outside of a stressful situation. Like let's say you're uh, lying in bed at night and you have this feeling, this surge of some sort. Can we chat about that? Yeah. And we did just mention that like creating that like bear in your head, right? When it comes to already being a bit stressed out and then thinking about all the different scenarios, past or present, you know? Um, just thinking about them in that way can create more of a stress state. So it definitely can be our mind, but there is often some physical stuff that could creep into the picture too, that can also contribute to it. So it's really nice to look at the big picture, especially if this is something that is going on more regularly for you, or it tends to be like something that's happening every night. You want to understand why and understanding the mindset piece, but also like the physical barriers as well. So one example, and I experienced this just recently myself is like, when you eat something that you're not like, that doesn't agree with you. Um, you know, that feeling, if you've like, if you don't do well with gluten and you have something with gluten, you could find yourself lying in bed at night, almost with like, uh, just like spinning like that, the the mental emotional connection and the stress response in your body, when you're having a reaction to something that you ate is really real. And so it might not be gluten for everybody. It could be just something else that you react to. So thinking about what you could have eaten, um, if your diet is supporting you, um, is something that is not always thought of, but worth thinking about. And then the other thing is blood sugar. And there's a couple different ways that this ties in because we often talk, think about, um, the whole physiological response of being in fight, flight or freeze where 
what actually is happening is the stress hormones are released, right? You get your adrenaline, your cortisol is all high and your body is going to actually pull sugar from stores so that you have energy to deal with the situation or the stress. And so when you're having this response, whether it's in your mind or physically, right? Like this blood sugar pull is happening. So what we've seen in practice is it could be either like a, a spike or a drop in blood sugar that could be causing this. So in some cases, people are doing intermittent fasting, right? Like very trendy right now, but maybe given your hormonal hormonal situation, not supporting you. And so um, people who are needing more energy, needing a little bit of a bedtime snack, not having one, dropping low sugar, low blood sugar in the night, sends off a stress response in the body. You've got high adrenaline cortisol release, or sometimes what we find is it's actually like lower cortisol picture. Like the stress, the stress hormones are either too high or too low. And it's a blood it's, it's responding to a blood sugar situation. So just another thing to think of from a dietary perspective, not just what did you eat before bed, but what did your diet look like throughout the day? Is it balanced? What are your portions like? Um, and working with a practitioner, if you need support and kind of getting that clarity around blood sugar to see if that could be something that's setting you off as well. Mm, such a good point. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Um, that's such a good point. Um, and then there's just so many other symptoms that we, people come to us with where they have these sort of adrenaline rushes. And I, I want to share one that's like kind of personal, but sometimes I experience something like this um, before a bowel movement. So I'm just sharing this only because <laughs> TMI, because I feel like it's helpful for some people. Um, and what, how I, you know, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, except for I know, um, you know, I feel like it's my body detoxing and it usually goes away very quickly, but, um, it's something that I, I connect with when I think of an adrenaline rush, I don't have them very often, but that's something that I personally, um, experience. And, um, so I thought I'd share. <laughs> yeah. And it comes in so many different shapes and short uh, shapes and sizes for different mm -hmm. people. When mm -hmm. that, when you mentioned that something that happens to me is if I, I think I'm going to fall or something really scares me, mm -hmm. my fingers tingle. Like I feel like yeah. a tinkle in my extremities. Maybe not so cool if the symptoms are really stressing you out, but right. the silver lining is there's so much support, right? And there's so much testing that is available to you now. Um, this is what we offer within our Fatigue to Fabulous program. You come in, you work with amazing doctors. We get to the root of what's going on with your hormones, with your health issues, and help you get some clarity so that you can step out of these really frustrating symptoms and hopefully get a good night's sleep, especially if these rushes are happening in the night. Yeah. And I, I want to mention that actually, from what you said earlier, I love how, when we talk to our, our clients and our private clients in particular, who are working and getting a really customized food plan with you and just working with you on the blood sugar piece, especially those that are experiencing uh, really big dips or especially insomnia, like how you are constantly tweaking and working with them on, especially after we have even better if we have test results to kind of um, bounce off of as well to get um, extreme clarity, but just making some shifts in their um, your food regimen, their diet, timing of food, anything like that. I just think it's, it's so great to see those shifts that can really sh shift um, something, uh, especially when it comes around sleep because, um, or even just night, you know, day energy too, those daytime dips you know, important things during your day that like, if you don't, if you could actually not have those moments of, of, of waking up in the middle of the night or having insomnia, once you wake up, those types of things, it can really be a game changer. Yeah. Thank you. It's one of the things I love about food is because yeah. it's like one of those things that is obviously supportive long-term, but if you tweak the right thing and you dial it in, like you can notice a difference tomorrow with just mm -hmm. one day of just balancing things in the right way for you and what your body needs right now. And it's so profound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really great. Awesome. Okay. So I think a couple more things I want to talk about. So um, can we talk a little bit about adrenaline dominance and the adrenal connection? Yeah. And we touched on that a couple, like a couple times throughout, but just to be clear is like your adrenals make adrenaline. This is all the way that your brain and your body is speaking to one another. Right. So, um, the adrenals of course are going to play a role here and if, but also your brain. Right. And so this is the whole connection pathway that we have to address when we're addressing this at the root level. Right. It's a HPA access, right. Which is what <laughs> adrenal, um, fatigue is all about. Um, so that um, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. And um, 
yeah, cool. And now a quick word from our episode sponsor, the Fatigue to Fabulous program. If you've been struggling with getting your energy back, we want you to know that affordable support is available in our Fatigue to Fabulous membership program. We invite you to finally balance your hormones, pinpoint the underlying root issues behind your symptoms, rewire your nervous system, and dial in your nutrition, supplements, and so much more via our online hub. You will also get access to live coaching from integrative experts and the support of our amazing recovery community. If you're ready to take the next step, come join us in the Fatigue to Fabulous monthly membership where you'll get instant access to a complete recovery system. If you are ready, you can find the link in the show notes or visit www.theadrenalrecoverycollective.com and click the pink button to get your full recovery system so you can start getting the results you want today. And one thing that's really interesting to think about, like in the wild, when you're having like a, a state of stress or the fight or flight response occurring, like when we think of nature is thinking about like what happens on the safari when like a lion is chasing a zebra. And in the situation where the lion doesn't get the zebra, like maybe it gets it for a second and then the zebra is able to get away. If you watch, and there's actually videos on YouTube where you can watch this actually happen, but in the wild, an animal will do a head to toe shake from like its nose right to the tip of its tail, shakes its body. And it's like, it shakes out this trauma of the stressful situation. And then it's like closes that circuit of that stress response. And we were talking about before we just started this podcast is like how interesting it is that in our day-to-day, when we get caught in this loop with adrenaline dominance, it's like the stress response never really finishes. It's like, we're just like stuck and we don't have that finish where we can finally feel that calm. I mean, a lot of us are just falling into bed at the end of a busy day, still spinning. And then we struggle with sleep and we have these surges and it's difficult. Right. We have the the hormones to deal with the, the stress, but then we actually don't have, need to fight or flee in, re- yeah. in a real way. So where we get sort of stuck and that can actually happen, um, that can actually create a bunch of secondary symptoms, right? So it's like um, things like dizziness, lightheadedness, change in vision, anxiousness, sleepiness, um, just to name a few of those. So yeah, I think that's very, very interesting. Um, so yeah. where's the, what is what's happening with that adrenaline? Where is it going, and how is that affecting us that we can't actually? Um, so is this a self-regulation issue as well? Like learning how to really allow the body to balance back out, right, and drop into that parasympathetic arrest and digest state, because as we know, that's where healing can occur, and that's where the balance, you know, the, the natural balance is supposed to to go. But it often, like you said, we'd fall into bed, and even then, it's really hard to to relax and hopefully we fall asleep, right? But we're not really being able to, to come down consciously, or, or a lot of us are stuck, like you said earlier, in that fight or flight um, chronically, which is, which is unfortunate, right? These days of just the way that we live our lives, um, the fast pace. And I, like I always say, like, um, it's not always what you do in a day, but how you do it. So we tend to get in these tendencies of rushing and doing things quickly, even when we don't need to be rushing. And that's a constant threat, right? Constantly letting, telling us, telling ourselves that we're in a hurry or it's a threat. It's a constant threat. So um, that we're not safe, that we're in a hurry, that we're not, we don't really have an option to relax. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So important. And it's interesting. And there's definitely people out there. I was one of these people back in the day where we try to use exercise to get rid of that stress. And you feel like you're just exercising because you're so you have all this pent up energy, but you might be at the point or getting towards the point where you don't even have the energy to do the right, those, that exercise anymore. And that exercise doesn't feel supportive anymore, but you still have that stress in your body, but it's like, that it's almost again, like another snake eating its tail. It's like, how do I get it out? Like, how do I finish this circuit? And that's what, where it's nice to have some coaching. Um, if you're feeling stuck, like, how do we, how do we deal with that? Yeah, definitely. That's so important. Um, 
to stop that overfiring, right, um, of the nervous system and being able to really, uh, like I said before, regulate. So such a good conversation. Um, I think one thing we want to definitely touch on before we before we end today is, you know, um, that it's important to be clear on why these um, episodes are happening, right? What What is the cause of it for you? So maybe it's just going to take a little bit of investigation, um, even just a personal self inventory or going deeper with uh, professionals like our team. Um, it's important to know that excess adrenaline um, can lead to greater health issues um, when it's chronic. Um, so we recommend you definitely work with a general practitioner, um, even better to work in conjunction with a functional medicine practitioner to explore the real root of the rushes, not just addressing, not just dealing with the symptom itself, but really why they're happening in the first place. Um, if you're prone to adrenaline or rushes, even without a lot of stressful situations in your life or you don't feel they're from a lot of stress, whether that, again, physical, mental, or emotional stress, we just recommend consulting you know, with a healthcare professional to find out why your adrenaline levels um, are, if they're indeed too high, um, what could be causing that. Um, so definitely get that checked out so you can rule out any larger issues. And um, yeah, anything else you wanna say about that, Danielle, before we no, close? No, I, I think that's great. Taking um, the first, you know, if this is happening to you, go get your blood work done with your family doctor. And then if you're not getting clarity as to why, it's like, sometimes it's hard to get the, into the deeper reasons as to why that might be happening. Don't stop there. Take it to an integrative mm -hmm. team. Um, jo come join us in fatigue to fabulous, ask questions, get curious, um, and know that there is more available out there. If you're, if you're not getting that clarity just with your family doctor. So keep looking and know that there's support here for you if you're looking for it. Definitely. And our, our approach is very holistic. So we're going to be not only addressing the, the diet, the, you know, the food piece, the gut, um, we're also going to get extreme clarity in what's happening with the hormones as well as most so much, so important, so important um, is this um, HPA access and really supporting you with um, rewiring the nervous system and toning that vagus nerve so you can be more resilient and you can drop into that parasympathetic lot faster. So all of those pieces are a part of our program. Uh, and we know that you can, we can do that. And when you start to work in in that realm of healing, um, it's amazing uh, um, what can really uh, shift for you very quickly when you start to address this situation in a very holistic manner. So um, thanks so much for listening to this one, everyone out there, and um, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Angela.